We are here in the middle of January at the home of Pat O'Brien. He's a Hopkinton resident who has been working on the police force in the same town he lives in for over 31 years. And today we're going to sit down and talk to him about his work, his involvement in the community, family, and what else is important to him in his life. Hi Pat, thank you for having me in your home this afternoon. Uh, it's lovely here in the middle of January. It's pretty cold outside, but uh, there's a very warm feel inside here, and it's good to see you today. Well, thank you very much, and, and I welcome you and Michael to our house. Thank you. Um, I thought I'd start with this interview saying that many people of the Hopkinton community see you uh, in different ways uh, at work or um, perhaps coaching or perhaps in the local Colella's store. Uh, and I've heard from a number of people, uh, whether you're on the job or um, you know, buying some groceries, that you have a way about you that is <laughs> kind and smiling generally and that you are well respected by people in the community here. I know that you have a demanding job in your work uh, for the police in town here. And I imagine that you, with your work especially, you deal with difficult and stressful situations. And there was something you had mentioned in advance about the importance of acceptance uh, in life, um, that you felt strongly that more people should uh, have uh, the awareness of uh, for day-to-day -day living, I, I thought it might be interesting to start out that way. And, and what, what do you mean by that? Uh, why do you think it's important for people? I always felt acceptance, especially in our job, in, in life mm -hmm. in general, um, is so important. Especially with so much diversity going on. Mm -hmm. And um, we see it from kids in school to adults in their job to every walk of life. And in our job, that we have to deal with that. Um, we have to take people for who they are and what they believe in mm -hmm. and put that, our own personal opinions aside to be able to um, mm -hmm. do our job effectively. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so that is uh, what is a philosophy to you on the job. And I know you also had mentioned the importance of acceptance for wishing it for uh, future generations to see the value in that sure. uh, and can you also speak a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean you can just have to look at the news tonight or the paper today and yeah. to just see the world and mm -hmm. unfortunately um, just the unacceptance that is out there mm -hmm. and what it's causing and doing to mm -hmm. not only you know this country but mm -hmm. to the world in general. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean certainly people have their right to their own religion, they have their right to their own heritage, mm -hmm. they have their right to their own philosophies and you know people gotta accept that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But with that being is that other people's opinions and philosophies should not be forced upon everybody else. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I know it's a dream but I think if people can learn to be able to accept other people's way of life not force it upon everyone else mm -hmm. and you know I think the world will be a much better place. Mm -hmm. Yeah well well said and uh, and a big wish an important one for <laughs> the world and I is. know the other uh, value you had in that response uh, the other wish for future generations that you had mentioned was peace uh, that the two can be equated and and that is important and maybe not always easy to see through uh, the day-to-day -day of a job uh, as difficult as being on the police force. Um, I thought I'd um, move on and say it seems like uh, you have brought this, these kind of values to your work and to your life from what I understand in raising your family in Hopkinton. Uh, where would you say that your values uh, have come from in, in doing the work that you do as well as raising a family here in town? Well, I, I think no doubt um, my father. Um, mm. My father's uh, Ted O'Brien. He's 93 years old. Wow. Uh -huh. um, he's still with us along with my mother who's 86. Mm. And my father, um, all his life has been a... Um, 
a server of the public. He mm -hmm. was a uh, fireman for 34 years in Milford. Mm -hmm. He was on numerous boards and committees right up until his elderly years. Um, mm -hmm. He was a member of the uh, Senior Center Building Committee over in Milford in his 80s mm -hmm. and uh, a board member of the Milford Geriatric well into his 80s. So he always pushed the philosophy of, of giving to others, especially those that can't really, you know, help or defend themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I know, uh, not to get into politics here, but he, mm -hmm. he was a very big Democrat mm -hmm. back when he believed the party was there to protect the poor and to protect mm -hmm. the underprivileged, and he would always advocate on, on that behalf. So, mm -hmm. um, as far as my uh, philosophy in general on um, my work ethic and how I deal with people, Certainly, it all derived from my father. Mm -hmm. He had a big impact on your life. Yeah, right? it still does. And still does, <laughs> still does. yes. Uh -huh. Well, that's yeah. good to hear. Uh, I'm aware that you grew up down the street in Milford. Yes, yeah. Um, what would you say, in addition to your father's teaching, that you learned in your childhood years or uh, that has stayed with you uh, in different ways, uh, influenced you? Maybe uh, in growing up in a community down the street in Milford. Yeah, Milford back in those days um, wasn't a lot different than Hopkinton mm -hmm. was um, here when I first moved in. Um, there was a lot of neighborhoods, there was community, mm -hmm. um, people knew each other. Um, I went to parochial school, St. Mary's, mm -hmm. up until ninth grade until St. Mary's closed. So um, I learned early. Um, as far as the school goes, you know, respect mm -hmm. and learn how to um, treat others, you know, the way you want to be treated mm -hmm. and some discipline in the school. Mm -hmm. um, and then playing sports in Milford, you know, I, mm -hmm. I was a, a gym rat and loved to play basketball. Yeah. And back in those days, so we're talking um, the 70s is, you know, you used to go out and play with friends. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you go down to the park and play basketball at night or you go to your neighbor's house and play wiffle ball, street hockey, mm. and unfortunately that seems to get lost in these days. Yeah. Um, there's kids got so much on their plate mm -hmm. and they're traveling here and they're traveling there that they don't have time to be at home and play with their own friends. Mm -hmm. So things have changed a lot, but um, growing up in Milford, there was a huge, huge community support over mm -hmm. in Milford and mm -hmm. there's a long legacy of, of things over in Milford that has always been, you know, part of me. Mm -hmm. And coming over here to Hawkington, um, you know, you, you saw that, that, you know, especially when I first moved over here, um, you know, there was a, a lot of old timers here, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of mm -hmm. families here. And the names, you know, were very similar, you know, throughout town. And as the town grew and um, things got maybe more expensive as far as property taxes mm -hmm. and people started moving out. So the demographics and dynamics of Hawkington has changed. but. Um, it's still a great community that people can um, get together, they can volunteer, they can get involved, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they can uh, you know, certainly be part of this community. Mm -hmm. So it <clears throat> sounds like uh, from what you experienced in growing up down the street in Milford, uh, the importance of community is something that uh, you sought in moving here um, and have found uh, to work in different ways in raising a family and also in working in the same town you live. Oh, certainly. And, you mm. know, and things are, you know, on a small scale here in Hawkington. Mm. But anyone can get involved in, in a lot of aspects in town, mm. you know, from um, the sports to, to the rec department, uh, to the activities in school, and, mm -hmm. you know, be part of that. But I certainly think that um, families, kids, parents, you know, need to get involved in this community, mm -hmm. and, you know, be a part of it, be an influence in it. Um, so that way, you know, it, it stays moving forward. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds like uh, part of, again, what your father inspired in you and what you have taken on. I know that uh, you have volunteered as a coach for basketball and Little League. Yep. yep. And um, you have uh, worked as, in, um, as a constable. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, all, I'm elected town constable. Elected constable. And people ask me, what is it? Yeah, do. I was curious about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, it, there's a couple of big things. One um, is they serve civil process. Mm -hmm. Now, as a police officer, I can't serve civil process. And civil process is basically like evictions or mm -hmm. um, 
civil suits or yeah. divorces and stuff like that. So I don't get involved in that. But also what a constable does, he posts the town warrants. And the town warrants are the notices that go up on the board when there's an election or there's a town meeting. Mm -hmm. So when I came on and in the 80s, um, Chief Bulker, Chief McRobert, Hank for that, um, there was always usually a police officer that was a constable because it was just easy for a town hall when the warrants were ready to call down the police station and say, can so-and-so go um, post a warrant? So mm -hmm. um, as people started leaving that position, they needed somebody else, and I moved into town. Mm -hmm. So um, I ran for the position and got elected and uh, probably been doing it for about 20 years now. Wow. Oh, okay. Well, uh Congratulations, and, <laughs> and again, more uh, volunteer work that you are providing in yep. addition to your work uh, on the police force. And I thought maybe we could talk a little bit about that sure. too. Um, and I know uh, you said you got started in uh, spending time with the firefighters in Milford sure. uh, because your father, that yep. was his work. Yep. Uh, I don't know, uh, what what made you think <laughs> in hanging around the fire station that you would go yeah. to the police? You know, I, I still think that. <laughs> and I, uh, uh, oh, you all, wonder yourself? Well, I, I think jokingly because mm -hmm. I... Mm -hmm. um, Got all the respect in the world for five firemen, mm -hmm, and yeah, um, yeah. you know, going to school in Milford, we used to get out, and then we used to go do our paper route. Mm -hmm. And then after the paper route, my, when my father was working, we'd go to the fire station, wait till he got out of work at six o'clock, mm -hmm. and then you know, we'd all go home. Or if we decided to go early, we, we would walk home from downtown Milford to where we lived up by the uh, the town park. Um, but. You're right, is we'd go and we'd hang around the fire station. You know, obviously we were very young at the time. And, um, but we'd see if there was an alarm, we'd see the guys come in, the fire trucks go out, fire trucks come in, them picking things up and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, a lo lot of time spent in the firehouse. Um, mm -hmm. Every uh, big parade over in Milford, we'd get a mm -hmm. seat in a ladder truck, and my father would, would drive the mm -hmm. parade route. Um, and you know around all those guys and as we got older and the snowstorms back in those days they used to hire young kids to shovel fire hydrants mm -hmm. and um, there was no seatbelt law back in those days mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. four or five of us used to jump on the back of a pickup <laughs> truck of the fire department and the uh, firefighter would drive somebody to a hydrant you jump out you start shoveling it out he'd drop other people mm -hmm. off and come back and pick you up and mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, a lot of time around the, the firehouse, but as I uh, grew older, got into high school, actually my thoughts were just on into law enforcement, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I uh, decided that's the path I wanted to go. And I um, got graduated from Milford High School and went to Westfield State, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, started the, uh, the criminal justice career there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it, um, it was funny, in my freshman year, um, where we could only take one criminal justice class each mm -hmm. semester. My other interest was um, where you guys hear TV production. Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. uh, we, I took a class each semester in my first year, and we had our own studio up there. Now, this is back in 77. Mm -hmm. So they had a mm -hmm. pretty good studio, yeah. and they had cameras, and uh, uh, really liked that. And the uh, class trip, we went up to CBC up in Montreal mm -hmm. and got a tour of that and, and spent some time up in Canada. But um, criminal justice won out it and I ended go. up mm -hmm. staying yeah. there instead of going into um, the uh, television and broadcast field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, you got involved in police work uh, right away here in Hopkinton well, once I, you finished? I got out of school and Back then, you know, like today, it probably wasn't as hard back then, um, mm. but, it, you know, th there weren't a lot of jobs. And I took a test, and I was on the list in Milford to get in my hometown, which mm -hmm. was, um, you know, probably every boy's dream growing up to, you know, be a police officer in your own town. And uh, the opportunity came in Hopkins in first. Mm -hmm. They called. Mm -hmm. uh, I took a test, and, and I got um, the call, and I started the academy in 1983. Mm -hmm. And um, end up getting, you know, graduated from the academy in '83 and started that year. And it's, uh, seems like a blink of an eye ago of an that, eye. Uh, mm. that it was. But um, it, uh, it was it was a great tenure, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. I had some great mentors throughout the years. And 
obviously Chief Bolka was a chief when I started and when you think of the typical small town old-fashioned chief um, that was Chief Bolka and that okay. was the way things were back in those days and he was chief for you know 20 plus years hmm. and um, you know his door was the first door when you went into the police station and you know he talked to people coming in and you know he, he would like to get out and get involved and and, and see people and um, after Chief Bulka, Chief McRobert who probably had um, mm -hmm. one of the biggest influences on me as far as my police career goes. Okay. And how, the, how so? Well <clears throat> he was uh, a no-nonsense guy. Mm -hmm. um, you know he ran the department even um, as a sergeant, you know, he was more of a hands-on than, um, than not. So um, he just made sure everyone did their job, mm -hmm. did it right, mm -hmm. and um, got what done was supposed to be done. So that kind of carried on, you know, as, as I went mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Tom Irvin took over. Mm -hmm. And Tom, a very good friend of mine, he was a, a patrolman when I started, became a sergeant, mm -hmm. and eventually became the chief. And... Um, it was, was a fantastic um, leader of the department, very mm -hmm. progressive, and um, did a lot of great things for the department. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, and the whole department going forward um, really is just the, the quality of men that have been in there. Mm -hmm. It's just been, I've been very fortunate um, to land in Hawkington um, and been, be able to... Uh, to do my whole career here, um, you know, following uh, Tom Irvin, you know, Chief Flannery, Rick Flannery, who I went to the academy with back in 1983. Mm -hmm. He rose up the ranks, and um, Chuck Wallace took over from Rick. And then, um, as of last April, they hired a new chief from the outside, Ed Lee, who has come in and has really integrated well with the department. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I think right, right down the list from the people that were there when I started, um, to the people that are here now um, just speaks volumes to the, the quality of people mm -hmm. that are on the department to make it just a, a very, uh, not just very efficient, but mm -hmm. a, a great place to work. That's good to know. Um, I think as residents uh, outside of the system because uh, oftentimes I think we take it for granted uh, the importance of having good people in um, serving on the police sure. force and what they do um, you know sometimes on the other side you might hear oh I got a ticket I got stopped <laughs> you know yeah. I remember my own mother saying that on uh, yeah. 85 once or you know you hear the the negatives sometimes sure. about what people need to be reminded about uh, um, but I know one of the things you spoke of the importance of why you got involved was in uh, the fact of helping people sure. um, and that that's a significant part of this job and uh, we would all be uh, in serious trouble I think <laughs> uh, literally if we didn't have uh, help in that way sure. from po good police uh, people yep um, it um you know that they're all saying protect and serve you know we do more serving than protecting yeah, yeah. as far mm -hmm. as you know we're out there and um, and that's uh, I think a philosophy that you know we all get here is that you know we're here to help the public mm -hmm. and, you know certainly mm -hmm. gonna do our job and we're gonna do the job but um, a lot of times people will come in you know not necessarily on a criminal or uh, police matter but maybe on a civil matter or mm -hmm. just a question or just looking for help mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know every one of our guys certainly would be willing to to go the extra mile to um, help, help someone that mm -hmm. comes in and needs a hand. Yeah, <clears throat> I uh, was wondering if you could uh, share a couple of most memorable moments <laughs> yeah. of your time, uh, given the span of it, in sure. um, helping through your work. Sure. Um, you know, there's certainly a lot of things that happened throughout the years, and um, I think probably the biggest one that sticks out in my mind is, is you know, when you're involved with saving a life. And, mm. um, you know, about uh, 15 plus years ago, uh, we started carrying defibrillators mm. in our cruisers. Mm. And, you know, we're one of the first police departments to start doing that. Mm. Because all of our police officers are certified EMTs. Mm. And mm -hmm. 
I don't think so, we know that here. Yeah, mm -hmm. so usually, like, especially on, on the night shift, if there's a medical call and the police officer arrives, you know, we have an EMT on the scene right mm -hmm. away so they mm -hmm. can help assess the situation, let the fire department know exactly what resources may be needed and, mm -hmm. and that. So one day we got a call and a uh, lady wasn't feeling well when we got there and she wasn't looking well. Mm -hmm. And um, she actually uh, coded on us, which mm -hmm. means a hot stop. Mm -hmm. And um, that was the first one on the scene and uh, other people started were there. Um, and then, um, <clears throat> so we put her down and started CPR on her and uh, attached the defibrillator on her and um, we ended up bringing her back. Wow. And, um, wow. She's still with us and, hmm. um, you know, that's always something that, of all the work you do, you know, that, mm -hmm. that's probably as important as, as anything you can my do. My goodness, so, yeah. Uh -huh. um, that's good. And my other one, I, I think that really sticks out, is um, we had a case where um, a resident of town was pretty much terrorized by um, an event that happened using the computer. Okay. And mm -hmm. um, the resident, um, you know, came to us and, you know, very, very terrified. And I was able to um, work the case and figure out who was responsible for it. And we ended up arresting him, mm -hmm. uh, bringing him to court mm -hmm. and kind of come a closure to the event and um, her knowing who it was and the circumstances around it certainly gave her a lot of relief. So, sure, right. Um, so she still lives in town and mm -hmm. every time I see, um, she's always got a big smile mm -hmm. and, and, and always uh, a lot of gratitude. So that, that, that certainly goes a long way to, mm -hmm. to know that we are appreciated for things that we do. Yeah, well really uh, changing <clears throat> the course of lives for those two people when you, you know sure. being there at that moment and helping in that way yep. so that is uh, really important work <laughs> um i know we only have a few more minutes i can't believe that already <laughs> uh that you also have raised uh, your family you have three sons with your wife that's right yeah uh you are about to celebrate 30th year i think anniversary yes yep uh-huh and your sons are adult yeah, uh, yeah. Now, out in the world? Or? Out in the world. Mm -hmm. um, we um, could be married 30 years this summer. Mm -hmm. uh, i got three boys, uh, Patrick, Daniel, and Connor, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. from 28 to 22. Oh, okay. Um, all out of college. Oh, <laughs> congratulations <laughs> to you. <laughs> so, uh, and, you know, the, um, you know, we moved here in 90, and um, Patrick was four years old, started preschool mm -hmm. here, so... Um, they all went through Hawkington school system. They all mm -hmm. did Hawkington youth sports. Um, grew up in town, and we're all part of that. I mean, Hawkington feel, and yeah. um, so it's great, great town place to bring up a family. Yeah. Um, so Hawkington kind of brought them up too. They and, did. They uh -huh. did. Yep, big part of it. And it's good to hear that they're on their own now out there. And yep, yep. They are. We got uh, one married and. Um, we got two out there, you know, working and uh, mm -hmm. just uh, doing really well. really well. Well, congratulations, and I understand um, the news is one thing you said was all right to say that yeah. some people don't <laughs> know about you is you're looking toward retirement coming soon. I am. I uh -huh. am. I uh, can only finish my 32nd year uh, mm -hmm. in wow. May, wow. And, mm -hmm. um, and once you get here that long, it, it's sometimes good in life to change things a little bit. Mm. And uh, I think I'm ready for a change. So mm -hmm. um, looking at the summer in July to get done mm -hmm. and uh, to finish up and then kind of go on to another phase of life and see see where that will bring me. TV? TV. <laughs> maybe TV, <laughs> maybe local no, TV we'll, at least. <laughs> well, yeah, we could maybe do some work over there. Uh -huh. So um, that's an interest and, uh, you know, it would be good. Um, you know, it was a great career. I couldn't ask for a better place to land than Hawkington and I couldn't mm -hmm. ask for a better town. Mm. to land in Hawkington and uh, very, very fortunate. And, uh, you know, certainly we're going to stay here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, retire in retire. Hawkington. Retire, <laughs> well, for, for the time being. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, certainly uh, we'll, we'll uh, see where, you know, the kids land and, yeah. and where life brings us. And uh, how about anything on your bucket list uh, that you can see right now? Well, right now... Um, I can show you right here. We're ah, uh, Ireland. Ireland. We're mm -hmm. planning a trip to Ireland oh, uh, this great. summer. Oh, wonderful! 
with the family, mm -hmm. and uh, so that, that's huge on the bucket list. So mm -hmm. I, I'm kind of spearheading that, so mm -hmm. it's uh, on my shoulder, so I got to make sure I take care of that. Um, that, um, got a big honey-do list. I got mm -hmm. um, some things to do around the house that I need to take care of. And I've never heard that before. Never heard that. It makes it sound good. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so enjoy that. Yeah, and I finally get some things done, and, and just to... Um, do something different, I think, will be yeah. kind of refreshing in life. Uh-huh. Well, it sounds well-deserved uh, after so much work and uh, the help that you've done in many different ways well, thank in you. community. So thank you for your good work, and thank, thank you. you for uh, your good interview today Okay, as thank well. you very much, Cheryl. So congratulations to you. Hi, I'm Cheryl Peralt, host of the program Meet Your Neighbor on HCAM TV. This show introduces you to Hopkinton residents, the many interesting people who are our neighbors, and we invite them to share stories, experiences, insights, and observations from their lives. We'd like to hear who you think should be interviewed on our program. So if you know someone that Hopkinton should get to know more about, please email me and stay tuned for more episodes of Meet Your Neighbor on HCAM TV. HCAM TV showing movies? That's right. Dive and Drive is a new show on HCAM. Join Mike and I as we present some B movies. Movies that have piqued the two Mike's interests. And not to mention, they're also free. We'll give you some interesting tidbits about the cast and crews. And point out some of the reasons these are classic B films. So check out the HCAM TV website at HCAM.TV for movie days and showtimes. Hello, I'm Cheryl Peralt, co-producer of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, an HCAM series honoring poetry, story, and song that takes place on the third Saturday each month before a live audience. Guest features share their art followed by an open mic with people who come from near and far. Others come to listen and be part of this warm and welcoming studio and to wake up a bit to arts and to life. You're welcome to join us and to tune in or visit our website for our weekly program. Hope you can join us. Yes, we're HCAM TV, but movies also? Dive-In Drive-In is a new program featuring the HCAM staff's favorite B-movies. Check our schedule at HCAM.TV for the next showing of some of the more forgotten films. Black and white or color, join Mike Terosian and myself as we introduce and give you some interesting facts about the cast and crews of classic movies. We hope you'll enjoy these treasured films of yesteryear.